Hey guys, it's Chris Jones for episode 95 of Ask Me Anything. As I promised in the previous episode, you guys that are still watching are in store for a series of awesome in-depth interviews with some individuals that came into my life and have had a very positive impact on who I've become. And they've allowed me to be part of their platform here in Northeastern Pennsylvania to make a difference in a lot of different ways, uh, both economically and civically. And so today I am super honored and excited to introduce you guys or to tell you a little bit more about my relationship with Don Webster and some of the stuff that we've done together. So Don, thanks for being here. Hi Chris, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, Don, you know, I have known you now for going on 20 years. It's probably closer to 15, but you were, um, you in my estimation are one of the people that, that, that I've always seen as a mentor because I believe that you uh, over, the last, over your whole career have pursued a lot of the things that I most admire about the impact that you've had on this community, particularly around entrepreneurship, uh, civic duty, and economic development. So um, we're gonna chat with the audience about how we've collaborated together sure. through the Great Valley Technology Alliance and TechBridge and Northeastern Pens Pennsylvania Technology Institute. Um, but if you don't mind, and I know you don't love talking about yourself, but for the viewers, can you share a little bit more about your background, you know, married kids, you're from the area? Sure. So probably the best way to do this is the, the reason that you and I got a chance to meet is um, I relocated to the area in over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work on Wall Street back mm -hmm. when that was cool to say. Um, but I got relocated here to run our back office operations, which was starting up de novo. Um, wow. As a result of us moving here, um, three weeks after my family came here, mm -hmm. they announced the sale of our bank in the UK. And we had a choice to make, which was, what are we going to do next? Mm -hmm. We were invited to um, move to London. Mm -hmm. We were invited to move to New York State with the acquiring mm -hmm. bank. And we chose to stay yeah. um, because of the things that we find of value in Northeast Pennsylvania. It's a great place to raise a family. And there's some really good assets here. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, we chose to stay, started four companies as a result of that over mm -hmm. time, um, and then had a chance to sort of get involved in the community and give back much like you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're, you, you now live where? In the, in the region, in the Poconos, or where do you live? Okay, so I live um, in Lackawanna County, in, mm -hmm. just outside of Waverly, mm -hmm. and um, been very fortunate. Awesome. So we meet uh, around 2004, 2005, somewhere in that neighborhood, because um, you were part of an organization called the Great Valley Technology Alliance. So tell us more about... Uh, what, I, what we've always referred to in the community is GVTA, but it's founding sort of roots because um, I know you were part of that. And also what the, what the purpose of that organization, why it was founded. So around, around 2000, around the, the turn of the century, um, a group from Scranton mm -hmm. and a group from the Scranton Chamber and the Wilkes-Barre Chamber and um, Bill Scranton and the Scranton family came together to talk about how could we look at the future of our region mm -hmm. in terms of creating family sustaining jobs looking forward. Yeah. And the idea came uh, together to look at what we could do from a tech-based economic development perspective. And um, organi uh, leaders from the region were mm -hmm. invited to get together and talk about what can we do collectively mm -hmm. in the larger community sense mm -hmm. to collaborate. What ultimately came out of those conversations was a convening organization mm -hmm. called Great Valley Technology Alliance. Okay. And it spun up a bunch of initiatives and programs to mm -hmm. be able to begin to leverage the assets of the region mm -hmm. in a new way to create tech-based economic development. What were, what were the signs or the trends? Because if, if we go back, this is, you know, geez, this is 17 years ago. What were you guys seeing at that time that led you to, we need to focus this organization around tech transfer, tech innovation. 
Was it was it the was it the internet? Was it was there were there other signs that you guys saw? I think it, it was probably a little bit more simple than that. It mm -hmm. was looking at this region's assets mm -hmm. and challenges and mm -hmm. saying what are the strengths that we can build on? Mm -hmm. What are the weaknesses that we need to collaborate on? Mm -hmm. And and one of the big assets of this region is there's 16 colleges and universities yeah. within an hour's drive of of yeah. the center. Yeah. So talent is something that's here. Yeah. Uh, economic advantage is here in the sense that this is a, a place where it's uh, you can effectively do business mm -hmm. from a cost perspective. Mm -hmm. So getting space, getting talent, mm -hmm. those are things that we can capitalize in this region. The question is, can we come together and can we work together mm -hmm. to leverage those assets? That was the purpose of that group. Awesome. So you guys convened, you came up with some, um, some vision for what this organization could could do. Can you speak to how you guys thought about the regional aspect of it versus sort of working in silos? Because you mentioned the Scranton and Wilkes-Barre Chamber coming together. And I think one of the things that I've always admired about GVTA and now TechBridge is that you guys kind of refused to look at it in a silo. You, you thought, if I'm not mistaken, that looking at this from a regional standpoint would be stronger together, that by pulling our resources, pulling our are, are uh, as you put, the 16 colleges and universities, you got to draw a bigger circle to do that, which I think is the right way to do it than just look at, say, Wilkes-Barre City or Scranton City. So Right, so, it's, so one of the things that, that we challenged was the assumption that it's just Scranton, it's just Wilkes-Barre. So, mm -hmm. so there are strengths that go into the Poconos, into Monroe County, all the way uh, in that direction, Wayne County, and then when we talk about Luzerne County, mm -hmm. it's not just Wilkes-Barre, but the, the assets mm -hmm. of the Hazleton area, for example, mm -hmm. so that we really can draw on real regional strengths. Yeah. So by, by the time I joined the board in, in 2003, 2004, somewhere in that neighborhood, um, one of the things that I had immediately noticed about the organization was that it had people involved from the public side. So you had you know, um, either political leaders and or political representatives. You had the private sector um, actively involved, uh, business people. And the uh, really amazing thing about what you guys did is you also had educational leaders. Now, um, there were two organizations. There were the GVTA, uh, and then there was something called NPTI, which is, was, the, I believe, the Northeastern Pennsylvania Technology Institute. Right. Can you share with us how you guys were able, I guess, to get all of those educational leaders. I mean, I had the privilege over those years of sitting next to college presidents on both of those boards, um, but how does that tie in? How, did, how, did, how were you guys thinking about the, um, how, to, how to sort of activate the collaboration between education, public sector, and private sector? So I think the easy answer is we were fortunate enough to, to reach into the community uh, you, you know this is a community that, that is very good at giving back. Yeah. Um, and they were able to identify influencers. And influencers come in many different ways, as you know. And so there was the private sector influence, mm -hmm. but there was also the academic center influence. Mm -hmm. Because in this particular region, mm -hmm. our academic centers are, are very much economic drivers. Yeah. Um, we were able to put together public private conversations because it made sense for everyone. I mean, talent made sense. Economic development makes sense. Um, leveraging collaboration mm -hmm. made sense. I mean, we were talking about entrepreneurship before mm -hmm. entrepreneurship was a subject that was taught yeah. and as a degree program. Yeah. We were talking about how do we leverage incubators mm -hmm. across the region, not just in one space, um, before those kinds of concepts were actively being discussed in the public domain. You know what, if, if GVTA and NPTI didn't exist, we may have an incubator in Scranton, but we may not have one in Wilkes-Barre or vice versa. I think one of the nice things about those two platforms was that those of you that were part of the leadership, especially early on, almost by virtue of the vision you had for those organizations, put everybody in the room. And, and it kind of required everyone to think about how, if we were gonna move down the, the, the line of encouraging and supporting entrepreneurship or young professionalship, um, why don't we think about that 
um, as a region. And, and, I, and, and the other piece that I really think was a game changer was how you guys were able to identify those three sectors and make sure that the educators the, at the top of the decision-making chain were involved in these organizations. So, so one of the things that, that this group talked about, um, and, I, and I remember from the very beginning, is um, seeing it for what it can be, mm -hmm. not knowing it for what it has been. Yeah. So basically saying, let's work together to leverage the strengths that we have. Let's create awareness about mm -hmm. the good things that are going on that we can all benefit from and let's put together our collective resources mm -hmm. and that makes us in many ways a much stronger virtual yeah. organization mm -hmm. for purposes of size and yeah. scale and opportunity. Yep, yep. Um, super, super uh, important to where we sit today at the end of 2017. Uh, if there was no GVTA or no NPTI and some of the other things that, that, that came out of it. We're going to chat specifically about some of what I consider to be the crown jewels, the assets of these organizations that have had a tremendous impact on this region. But, but for your vision and others that were with you in those founding days, um, we would not be sitting here in this KBJ Capital loft and a lot of the other things that are examples of, of regional collaboration wouldn't have happened but for those organizations. Um, so let's chat more about some of the programs and just, just to, so, so folks that are, are watching understand, um, when I first went into the innovation center in Wilkes-Barre, we, uh, Mike Jones and I had a small 200, 300 square foot office on the second floor and right down the hall from us, uh, were the employees, uh, Chris Heron and some others, um, that were running the GVTA at that time. And so Mike and I had sort of this, this, this sort of insider viewpoint of some of the stuff that those guys were doing. And I was later honored to be invited to sit on that board. And over the last 17 years, um, I've participated on and off on that board. In fact, I remember when you guys asked me to be co-chair, uh, it was coming off your tenure. So I had to do my best to fill your big shoes and at that time, we were going through a number of, of different, different things, so it was, it was a challenge regardless. But just wanted to let everybody know that this, is, this, is not, this interview is, is not just about um, you know, uh, GVTA, but it's, it's about something that I care deeply about. A lot of how I think about economic development and how I think about regional collaboration you know, stems from what Don and that early team put together as an infrastructure. Uh, so I, I credit the GVTA and MPTI as, as allowing me to be me in this region because you guys provided all of those, those resources and assets. So let's dump, jump into some of those assets. So we're just going to go one by one. And if, and if you could kind of give us a brief summary of, of the purpose of these programs, how long they've been around, and maybe a highlight or two. Sure. So in my opinion... Um, and this may change over time because you've got some amazing new programs that we're going to chat about. But the business plan competition, I believe that our business plan competition is as well run and as uh, well organized as almost any business plan competition in the country. I really believe that. Tell us more about what it is and um, how long it's been around, too. So the Tech Bridge Business Plan Competition was one of the first programs that this regional organization put together. Um, I was fortunate enough to be part of that founding mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the conversation having been someone who relocated to the region mm -hmm. and saying, why can't we do this here? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the idea was, let's get something started. We've got all of this talent in this region. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can do with it. Um, there was some question as to whether or not we could even get it done when talking to people in the community, but you know, two's a competition. That was a phrase that came mm -hmm. out of the very first competition. Mm -hmm. 17 years later, um, we're, we're proud of the organizations that have spun mm -hmm. out of that. I mean, we recently had someone who received funding on Shark Tank, yeah. who was a former winner. Yeah. We've uh, got several of our teams that have had successful exits. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really giving the people in this region a platform to demonstrate how they would take their ideas mm -hmm. to an execution stage. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's been an amazing series. I think the best thing about it is 17 years later, we're still doing it and it's it keeps growing every year. And you also have the, you know, having been involved in that and having chaired that as well at, at one point, um, we really leverage the colleges and universities that you mentioned before as sort of feeders um, to, to, to encourage their business students and their entrepreneurial students to put together these business plans. But the, the other thing that we encouraged was the learning opportunity. Um, one of the things that we talk about in the business plan competition is demonstrate that you can work as part of a team. Yeah. Put this on your resume. What we find from recruiters and, yeah. and HR staff, when they're hiring, mm -hmm. they're talking to people who have been in a business plan competition, they see it on their resume, it's a natural jumping mm -hmm. in point because mm -hmm. it gets people talking about what they were able to contribute, mm -hmm. what they were able to learn, yeah. what they took away. And it tells their recruiters, the yeah. recruiters so much more about what this person's really made of. So yeah. it's whether you win or you lose, the opportunity to participate is yeah. something that, that you can take away as a win from this. Again, I mean, so well organized and structured that I have heard so many participants tell their story to me whether or not I was a judge or whether or not I was even in the room, they tell the story in a way that it's a very material storyline in their resume. So I, I couldn't agree more. Two dimensions too. We have started out at first it was just a collegiate competition. Yep. Um, then through um, some great thinking by Rob Watts, who was yep. part of the organization yep. in the past, we expanded it to the early stage. Yep. And what's interesting now is they're, so non-collegiate division. Uh, a non-collegiate division, yep. early stage companies yep. mm -hmm. who um, were just starting out. Um, now there are teams that have turned into companies yeah. and companies that are working with, with other fellow participants yeah. working together. So you know that phrase ecosystem is somewhat overused, yeah. but in this particular case, it's really the club is checking yeah. in and helping mm -hmm. each other. Yeah, it is, um, it's a crown jewel and it's held once a year right? Can Spring you give us just a timeline? So if someone's interested in, in, in submitting, what is the typical So, so what timeline? we do typically is in the, in the fall, before the end of the year, when students come back, we begin talking about, are you interested in building a business? Are you interested in exploring, <coughs> excuse me, working mm -hmm. on a team? If so, let's start talking about some ideas that yep. you might have or some interest that you might have with your skill set. Mm -hmm. If you're an accounting major, if you're a marketing major, if you're an IT major, finding a place with someone which, with your own idea yep. or someone else who has an idea that has a need. Yep. So then what happens is these teams sort of come together, there's an application, they have to register by the mm -hmm. end of January, then there are help sessions to mm -hmm. form their idea into actual business plans. Submissions come in April. There's a judging process and an awards yep. dinner that takes place before school ends towards the end of April, beginning of May. And let's segue into the Entrepreneurship Institute, which, by the way, could have preceded this because you use it as sort of a, a tool to encourage those who attend to inform them about the business plan competition, et cetera. So tell us more about the Entrepreneurship Institute, uh, the why of it, and um, you know, and the what, I guess. So the Entrepreneurship Institute is another of the founding programs. Mm -hmm. And the context for the Entrepreneurship Institute was that um, it started about 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you think back, 17 years ago, entrepreneurship was not a traditional major yeah. in our college and university curriculums. Mm -hmm. And so um, the idea was to bring together Mm -hmm. interested entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to explore what does it mean to be an entrepreneur yeah. in a, a collective setting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it was used as a basis for education, mm -hmm. but also as a jumping off point to say, if you really want to do something, try going into the business plan competition. Yeah. So um, it has now evolved because there is you know, traditional curriculum around entrepreneurship in our colleges and universities. We now complement that. Yeah. So the entrepreneurship now is business professionals mm -hmm. who come in and either talk on a panel or in a presentation mm -hmm. environment or in a workshop mm -hmm. so that we present students with the opportunity to talk about the real mm -hmm. world elements yeah. of entrepreneurship, whether that's confidentiality agreements yep. Yep. or branding or networking mm -hmm. or communications or funding. Yeah. It gives them a chance to talk with and to and about topics yep. in this space. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Um, 
one of the newer um, assets, just a couple years old, if I'm not mistaken, is the Innovation Conference. Right. Can you chat with us about that? So what we're trying to do in the organization is provide opportunities for different kinds of, of interested learners, mm -hmm. if you will. So one of the things that we decided was there needed to be a platform for our more science and technology oriented conversations. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was to create an innovation conference. Mm -hmm. First of all, the concept was let's talk about innovation in Northeast Pennsylvania. Sure. Let's leverage the conversation to what we can be. So the idea is to reach into our colleges and universities, particularly our professors who are doing research, mm -hmm. and collaborate around common themes mm -hmm. where we can have the science of a conversation mm -hmm. and then complement that with the business yeah. side of a conversation. And so the first year we tried it, we did it around additive manufacturing. Okay. The second year we did it was around bioscience. The third year, which will be next year, we're going to be talking about smart machines. Mm -hmm. Again, might be AI, might be Bitcoin, might mm -hmm. be drones, might be virtual reality. But the idea is to leverage conversation around mm -hmm. the research that's taking place in our businesses yep. and our community around different topics uh, that are important for our community. Awesome. So next we're going to chat about TechBridge Radio, but one of the things that I recall from the roots of my involvement in these organizations uh, until Don uh, really eventually and finally, I think, found a winner in being able to have a bigger megaphone. Because some of the folks that are watching this may be like, holy cow, these things are happening in my backyard. Yes. The purpose of them are to support your success as an entrepreneur or a business owner, um, to get you involved. And any of the things that Don has talked about here um, present opportunities for you as a business and civic leader or an economic development professional to get involved in the region and get behind and also to benefit from these things. But uh, let's talk about TechBridge Radio. So how did that come about? And it is, from my perspective, because I see how you're leveraging um, your communication strategy on social media and email that then plays into radio, that sort of integrated marketing approach that you're taking currently with TechBridge, I think is, is brilliant. And, I, and, and the content that's coming out of this is, is awesome. So tell us more about TechBridge Radio. So TechBridge Radio, again, we talk about different platforms for different people for different reasons. Mm -hmm. TechBridge Radio, at its core, is about telling success stories in Northeast Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, and the pronoun here might is I, mm -hmm. one of the things that, that I think we could do better as a region is celebrate our successes. Mm -hmm. There is a tremendous amount of good things going on in our region relative to entrepreneurship, innovation, and the mm -hmm. knowledge economy. Sometimes people don't really know all the good things that Chris Jones is doing, mm -hmm. or all the good things that are going on in Hazleton, or Stroudsburg, or at King's College, or at, at Johnson College, yeah. or at Lackawanna College. One of the things that we're looking to do is to create awareness. Mm -hmm. And that so the purpose of TechBridge Radio is to create a platform mm -hmm. where we ultimately can create a podcast solution. So whether you want to hear live yep. a conversation with an entrepreneur or a difference maker in our community, or when you have the chance, whether you're mm -hmm. driving or flying or you have some downtime. We want to create the opportunity for you to do a little learning about what's going on in our community and go, oh, that's neat. I'd like to learn more. Yeah. So TechBridge Radio, we do an array of different conversations with different yeah. people. Common theme, tell us about how you're making a difference in our community. Where can people listen to uh, TechBridge Radio, both live and then, of course, uh, via digital? So the easiest way to find us is um, to go to our website, which mm -hmm. is techbridgepa.org, no mm -hmm. H. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also find TechBridge Radio on all of the podcast platforms, so Apple and Google Play. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it, it's easy, it's convenient, mm -hmm. uh, it's flexible. Check it out. Awesome. Um, and it, it's usually Saturday mornings on the Talker, right? The local if station. You, if you're in a, lo in a local region, you yep. can follow us uh, on 94.3 yep. FM, the Talker. Yep. You can also use the Bold Gold Media app. Yep. Ra the can, Radio Bold app, I can, think. Yeah. Radio Bold, or you can find us uh, through the podcast. Awesome. And some of those folks that are listening here that, that aren't from Northeastern Pennsylvania, I shouldn't assume that that's my only audience. Um, 
you know, check it out because you know, a lot of what Don is talking about in terms of the roots in education and, and public and private, a lot of these people are on that platform. And no matter where you're at, you may get some ideas for how you could get more involved in your community around some of these topics. So um, let's jump to one of your newest programs, if not your newest program. Uh, it's the, the High School Entrepreneurship Institute, right? Right. So tell us more about that. And before you do, I think that when we think about some of the trends in STEM and how when we think about where us as a, as a culture, as a country, how we're going to be competitive 20 years down, 10 years, 20, 30 years down the road, it's great to support college students and young professionals and entrepreneurs, but if we really want to target the future of the region, it seems like so appropriate to, to get behind our youngest sort of entrepreneurs, the lemonade stand entrepreneurs, if you will, uh, at the high school level. So tell us more about that. So um, the High School Entrepreneurship Institute is, is new and fun and making a difference. Um, the thing that was interesting, when we did our last innovation conference, we had a panel discussion mm -hmm. around the future of bioscience. Mm -hmm. One of our panelists was the superintendent of Lake Lehman School District, mm -hmm. a gentleman by the name of Jim McGovern. Mm -hmm. And what Jim talked about wasn't so much bioscience as it was raw materials. Mm -hmm. and, and what he said was, you guys have all this great conversation that you're talking about with the medical school and the engineering schools and the regional emphasis on um, the work that's being done in our drug companies and medical mm -hmm. device companies in the region. <clears throat> he said, my job is to help create the raw materials that are going to give you the talent opportunities to drive your businesses in the future. And I think it was, it, it, I mean, the, I, the audience was like, oh, wow, like it, yeah. was, it was an aha moment in some respects. Um, the idea of the High School Entrepreneurship Institute is to, is to sort of grow our ecosystem, again, I use that word again, sorry, mm -hmm. in, this, in the sense that our high school students represent a piece of mm -hmm. the community puzzle. From a culture perspective, we want them to understand that you can do it here. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity here as much as it is anywhere else that there are successful people doing cool things. Mm -hmm. um, and let's get them introduced to the concepts in case they want to pursue it for themselves, mm -hmm. in case they want to talk to a Chris Jones mm -hmm. about the experiences that he's had and why he's doing the things mm -hmm. that he's doing. And also to see that there are some major league firms in our region that if you want to work in communication arts, if you want to work in information technology, if you want to work in health sciences, mm -hmm. that there are real opportunities, follow your dreams, mm -hmm. follow your passion, and oh, by the way, if you want to try it, there are, here that are, there are people here that will help you follow your dream if it's being an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's just awesome. So any other um, new programs that you want to share that TechBridge is working on? Um, or anything that I had missed in terms of some of the, the core assets of the organization? I think we have a pretty pretty broad date. We're trying to reach out to people in, in where they want to live. Mm -hmm. um, we are dabbling in an inventor's guild. We are looking to leverage uh, some great work that's being done in Northwest Pennsylvania around um, helping early stage firms do Kickstarter campaigns. And that's a new program that we're looking to do where we would actually leverage college students to help get Kickstarter campaigns yeah. formally launched. So that's a, a new initiative that we're dabbling in. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's more about just inviting people to participate and engage in the process. That's really what we're trying to emphasize. I think that we made a really good case, but let me ask it as sort of a next to closing question. Um, and be specific. What can TechBridge do to help local entrepreneurs and business people? So I think the, the thing that TechBridge can do the best is provide opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one of the things that we as, as a region um, are guilty of is being heads down a little bit too much. We have a lot of people doing a lot of really great things, but every once in a while we need to make sure that we're looking up. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way you can do that is by providing opportunity. Yep. You know that you and I are working on a whole new 
sort of uh, an opportunity for entrepreneurs to come and mm -hmm. pitch their ideas yep. to funders. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the new things. Just come and watch. Yeah. Um, listen to a TechBridge Radio episode. Mm -hmm. uh, volunteer to be a judge in a mm -hmm. competition. Um, come to an event. Um, mm -hmm. You can learn something. You can network. You might create sure. an opportunity for your business. Yep. Um, just get engaged. I think TechBridge is mm -hmm. providing a, 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 an array of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Find one that makes sense for you. Awesome. And the final question is, um, TechBridge is set up as a nonprofit, correct? Right. So the purpose of the organization is really a civic, sort of altruistic, um, uh, you know, doing everything that the organization can to stimulate entrepreneurship and economic development in northeastern Pennsylvania. So um, let me ask specifically, how can entrepreneurs and business leaders and others in the community help TechBridge, the nonprofit? What are some of the things that they could do to help you guys and our board and our organization thrive for the next 5, 10, 50 years? So I think there's two, two answers to that question. First, have a voice. Yeah. Um, provide input and opinions on what you think this region needs to do mm -hmm. to get to the next level in any arena. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to have a voice. Let people know your opinions mm -hmm. and where you think we should be going. The compliment to that is, oh, by the way, help participate in making those opinions a reality. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing to have a say, it's another to make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second is, as a nonprofit organization, the way that we sustain ourselves mm -hmm. is through our programs. And so um, you know, the traditional model is uh, sponsorship and participation. Mm -hmm. I prefer to say, get engaged. Mm -hmm. Just see whether there's something that hits you where you live, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, being involved with um, listening mm -hmm. or being involved in judging mm -hmm. or coming to an event where you can actually make a contribution oh. both personally and professionally. Absolutely. I think that those that are, are watching and listening and, and have really, um, I, I hope that you guys have, I hope you guys are inspired by the amount of work that has been done by Don and, and those around him over these last 17 years. And you know, in order to make these organizations thrive for years to come, tons of sponsorship opportunities, tons of volunteer opportunities, and I want you guys to really carefully think about how you could be part of activating the future of this organization. The one thing that I would say, Chris, is, <clears throat> is I would leave you with stay tuned for mm -hmm. the investment fund that TechBridge is leading because that's the, the next big thing coming mm -hmm. out um, where we're actually going to have a fund in this mm -hmm. region investing in early stage firms and won't that be cool for the region? I think that that would be extraordinary for the region and I want to thank you for being on this episode and I will see you guys for episode 96. Peace.